Hi guys, bringing you a video today on these. Um, I thought I'd keep up the, the momentum on doing videos on, on medical equipment dressings and things like this. Uh, and this is the, the successor to the shell dressing and field, first field dressing. It's a joint services dressing, and these were made in two different sizes to cover the role intended for the shell dressing and the first field dressing. This is one of the larger examples. It's the earliest dated example I have, December 1972. They appear to have come into service in the early 1970s. Uh, I can't find a specific date, um, but uh, early 1970s certainly seems to be introduction date as far as I can work out. They su at first supplemented and didn't entirely replace the pre-existing shell dressing and first field dressing. Uh, and it, as already related in the previous video on shell dressings, the early dated shell dressings and first field dressings were being issued in the Falklands campaign and were certainly in use in training at least until the 1990s. So. Uh, these, I believe, have been recently replaced, the joint service dressing. Um, I'm not sure how recently. I've not been able to find someone who knows, when. The, again, when the transfer date, but these aren't issued anymore, uh, as far as I'm aware. Uh, they do have, interesting, I believe, presumably for Canadian use, they also have the instructions on the back in French. So I'll put up a photograph, I'll put up a still of the front and back for you to have a look at the details of. So here we have the front of the packaging of the joint services dressing, and you can see here the instructions as usual and uh, the date stamp at the bottom there, December 1972. This is the larger example. And uh, if you'd like to read more, you can pause here, of course. And then we have the back, which uh, includes the same instructions, but in French, which may be for Canadian use, perhaps, or possibly it's just another NATO army's language um, included. I, I don't know for sure. If anyone does, I'd be interested to know, so please let me know in the comments. Uh, they're made in two sizes, as I say. There's this one here, dated 1972, the large example, which is 20 centimetres by 19. And then you have the 10 by 19 centimetre, which is a smaller version. This is dated June 1978. And here we have the smaller example, which is dated June 1978. And you can see the instructions there again. And once more, you can pause if you wish to read those. And again, they're duplicated on the back in French. And you can see the NATO stop code uh, in the top corner there to differentiate the two. Basically ending six two or six three, depending on the size. Um, and as I say, they were they were introduced to replace uh, the uh, shell dressing and first field dressing, but to, that took a long time to take to to take effect. Uh, and these are they'll fit in the pocket. The, certainly, the smaller ones will easily fit in the the uh, dressing pocket on post eighty four combat clothing and tropical shirts and things like this on the arm. There's a dressing pocket which these are carried in. You can quite clearly see the dressing pocket here on the arm of the shirt in this photograph of a captain of the 17th 21st Lancers taken during the first Gulf War. I say I have an open one so I will bring that up now and show you the contents. This is a uh, packaging here it's a 10 by 19 so it's the smaller example and if we open this up you can see the pad there which you shouldn't handle of course but I will to show the internals and then you have in fact the instructions are there on the um, put other side next to wound and then it has it in French underneath as well um, and you can see you then have this khaki uh, bandage uh, which can be used uh, they also contain which seems to have gone missing uh, a pack of um, safety pins which I may have thought ah, there they are they were tucked away inside the packaging so you also get a little pack of four safety pins in brown paper there to pin pin up the uh, the bandage so yes as I say I have some later dated examples here you can see a slight diff slight change to the color slightly pinker color there um, later example later example not no date but it is a later manufactured example of the larger type um, I'm trying to see I have a 90s dated example here somewhere I think uh, it's the only problem with having so many of them lying around the uh, opened one was 1990s dated, I think. Yeah, 1996. If I bring that up to the camera there, I won't take a photograph of, uh, still of this one, but you can see the date there, May 1996. Hopefully that's uh, in focus okay. So there it is. As I say, the successor to the um, first field dressing and uh, shell dressing, just a bit more modern. As, a, as you will have seen in the shell dressing video, this form of packaging, this the waterproof outer, uh, was introduced with the shell dressing, the later productions of shell dressing. I'm not sure if there's a, a, an equivalent first field dressing, uh, but these replaced those and these were used through the late latter part of the Cold War. And I believe into the 2000s at least, 
uh, before being replaced. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, I will be doing a video on the first field dressing as well at some point, uh, a look at that. Um, something I wish to, if you're watching this video, having watched the shell dressing video, I'm doing research, digging into, trying to find out more about uh, the development of British Army dressings. I discovered that there are actually 1914 dated shell dressings in existence. Um, my understanding and what had been promulgated uh, in various sources I'd read was that the shell dressing was in introduced in 1916. It seems it was introduced somewhat earlier. So I've altered that the title of that video and put a, a pinned comment in there to correct that mistake. So my apologies. Uh, for that mistake. Um, but as I say, I hope you found this video on the Joint Services Dressing interesting. Um, I'll be doing, as I say, one on the first field dressing soon and the shell dressing bag. Um, if you haven't already, check out the Facebook group, which is there's a link to in the description where there'll be discussion of upcoming videos and uh, things like that. Uh, also photographs posted and so on. Uh, if you haven't already and you, you like my videos, please consider subscribing. Um, and if you do so, make sure you hit the notification button uh, so that you're notified of when I upload uh, videos in the future. And uh, I hope you found that interesting, as I always say, and I keep repeating. And uh, until next time, bye for now. <laughs>